Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about the PACER Station 5 task. Um, so this is a station touted by many to be uh, one of the most important in the PACER exam because of the mark weightage given to the station. And at the same time, it's also a station that's uh, slightly unfamiliar given that we are usually quite acquainted to long cases and short cases and this sort of falls somewhere in between um, with uh, new additional elements to it. So let's dive in. So this is uh, the general time breakdown for the Station 5 task. Um, it's a total of uh, 10 minutes, uh, not counting the preparation time. So it's recommended you spend about 3 minutes on history and examination, another 2 minutes on counselling and discussion, respectively. Um, of course, sometimes this will have to be tweaked uh, based on the uh, circumstance and how you're faring in the case. Um, the Classic Station 5 uh, task uh, classically has uh, two components. There is an acute problem and a background chronic problem. And this acute problem usually has to be contextualized to what the chronic problem is. So in other words, you often have uh, to have a suspicion of what's the underlying chronic problem to be able to come up with an illicit contextualized differentials to address the acute problem uh, in a manner that is, um, that is ideal. So when it comes to the chronic problem, um, you usually have to diagnose what this problem is, evaluate for features, complications, and other lateral associations that can often tie in with um, what are the possibilities for your acute problem. Concerns then have to be elicited explicitly, and then you would have to counsel the patient uh, with this as a proposed um, outline where you talk about diagnosis and differentials, um, disposition, whether the patient will be admitted or discharged, treatment uh, for both the symptoms and underlying disease, as well as follow-up discharge advice and any relevant safety nets, especially if you are going to discharge the patient. So the Station 5 um, task requires a certain way of uh, thinking. So let's look at it in terms of the, the approach. Uh, firstly, you would need to have um, adequate breath, both in terms of the types of condition as well as the um, the content for each relevant disease condition. It is also important to be able to come up with patterns and be able to ingrain these patterns in your mind. And um, it's also important to know what are some of the more cases unique conditions that we don't see so commonly in our daily clinical practice. Um, but because of the fact that they manifest with very um, florid clinical signs, these uh, cases often tend to feature in the patient's examination. And this would guide your inspection even before uh, you actually speak to the patient. In terms of conditions, it's important to think about it bottom up and uh, top down. So bottom up means that you will need to have details and understanding of, um, for example, how you diagnose a condition, what are its features and basic information about treatment. But the truth of the matter is that oftentimes, because of the way the exam is structured, you don't have to know very, very much about some of these uh, perhaps more esoteric conditions. And we'll go into this concept of uh, opening doors and moving up floors. The idea is that um, when you come up with your approach, <clears throat> as you funnel down uh, different um, branches of your approach, you then um, eliminate certain uh, levels of what we call uh, diagnosis that are on the same tier, and then we move up to be able to evaluate things in greater detail. So I think it is important, first and foremost, to know what comes out commonly, and this is uh, a just a brief overview sample of some of the conditions that came out um, in the recent exams. And uh, so basically, I took a look at the past, um, past year examinations. Uh, so as we can see, um, graves came out very frequently with some of the associated <coughs> um, presenting complaints, uh, acromegaly, psoriasis, systemic sclerosis, angst spawn, also some of the favorites. As you can see, there's a very high representation of uh, endocrine and rheumatological disorders. So it would be um, imperative to actually uh, pay adequate focus on these conditions. And of note also, there are some of these rare conditions that is important to at least have an idea of uh, for the PACES examination. Things like retinitis pig pigmentosa, men syndromes, uh, etc. So it's also important to, to prepare for the uncommon and um, uncommon, I think, of it both in terms of the approach and the condition. So 
approaches wise, um, there are sometimes common approaches that come out. So things like let's say chest pain, where we would have a certain clinical based algorithm for day to day practice. But it's important to realize that sometimes in the PACES examination, even within uh, familiar approaches, we may miss out um, certain uh, conditions that we don't usually uh, incorporate into our approaches. So it is important to actually identify these gaps and incorporate them deliberately into your PACES uh, approach. The next group would be the unfamiliar approaches, which we'll talk about uh, later on. And conditions wise, like I mentioned, there are some uh, PACES favorites. Uh, that you will need to spend some time on studying and familiarizing yourself with. So these are what I mean by um, common familiar approaches, but certain uh, elements that may not necessarily feature in our approaches. So like in headache, uh, hyperviscosity, giant cell arthritis, uh, some things that may come out in the PACER Station 5 examination, but we may or may not uh, very typically put them in our usual differential list. Or chest pain or dinophagia can come out, and as you go down the list, you get the idea of um, some of the things that you may need to incorporate into some of these familiar approaches. And these are some of what I call the less familiar approaches, but we don't see so commonly things like chorea, uh, vitro problems, amnesia, paresthesias, uh, itch, flushing, etc. And these do come out fairly frequently in the PACES examination because of some of the associated conditions. So then we talk about PACES favorites. As mentioned, rheumatological and endocrine disorders uh, feature quite heavily. So it would be important to, once again, go back to that list of uh, commonly tested conditions and to study around them. Neurological disorders um, also feature here alongside in the neural short case. And um, this are a list of uh, some of the other PACES favorites uh, that you should spend some time reading around. Hmm. So we talked about patterns. Um, so these are two uh, conditions, uh, and when we talk about, oh, sorry, two, two approaches that are familiar to us, when we think about patterns, there are a few ways to think about it. It can either be um, patterns of the characteristic of the symptom. So for example, uh, abdominal pain that is intermittent versus constant. Uh, and when we think about intermittent abdominal pain in the PACERS context, then you think of the different kinds of colic. You need to think about gut claudication, uh, porphyria, hereditary angioedema. Um, and sometimes we can think of it with associations. So if you look at the headache um, list, uh, you have headache plus hypertension, headache plus blurring of vision, uh, headache plus features of race ICP, and these, uh, the presence of headache with an associated feature will cue you in on certain uh, diagnosis. So it's important to have sort of a mind map uh, that is um, clinically uh, centered, meaning that uh, there are symptoms when elicited or uh, paired with the key presenting complaint that will help to narrow down your differential list and it is worthwhile to consider making your own list uh, of something like this. <clears throat> so let's talk about examples of uh, classic uh, station 5. So uh, an easy case would be inflammatory back pain secondary to psoriatic arthropathy. So it can be an approach to back pain uh, that is inflammatory sounding in nature and then um, this is where we talk about going through uh, different doors to approach different floors right so your first uh, set of door that you go through is this inflammatory back pain door where you try to uh, evaluate whether it's more autoimmune sounding infective sounding neoplastic sounding and thereafter it comes across um, autoimmune sounding with a possible um, suggestion of psoriasis or some form of spondyloarthropathy, and then you move through to the next door and to the next floor where you're evaluating uh, for features of psoriasis. That's when you start asking for any breathlessness that may be associated with interstitial lung disease, any new changes uh, or associated features. So you get the drift as to uh, this concept. So we move on to something slightly more complicated. So this could be an approach to uh, lower limb swelling. So from the lower, lower limb swelling, you try to elicit whether this is um, hypoalbuminemia due to um, fluid overload uh, from an intravascular overload or cardiac disease or some form of local regional problem, like let's say uh, chronic venous insufficiency. And um, maybe in your history, you noted that this patient had 
uh, some form of um, frothy urine, the edema is pitting, there is um, element of anasaka, and you come to the conclusion that this is nephrotic syndrome. Then the next door you have to go through and floor you have to explore would be what is the cause of nephrotic syndrome. So you take uh, further history and then you, you come to suggestion that there might be amyloidosis. And at the level of amyloidosis, there's another door that has to be entered because um, you have primary and secondary amyloidosis and further history may yield um, clinical features suggestive of rheumatoid arthritis. So this uh, second, in, uh, what we call intermediate difficulty case has uh, several more levels compared to the first one. And then next we <clears throat> move on to something with um, even more levels. So this could be an approach to polyuria. So you have to differentiate whether this is a true polyuria, whether it's frequency, you've established polyuria, and then um, you, you come up with basically the suggestion that there is an element of hypercalcemia because of associated, let's say, abdominal pain. Uh, and um, from there, you try to elicit uh, what the cause of hypercalcemia is. And um, you then uh, extend things laterally to identify other associated features of men's syndrome. So this is uh, a quite a classic Station 5 example that incorporates elements of um, different levels to the diagnostic dilemma. There is a chronic uh, background condition of men's syndrome. There is an acute uh, presenting complaint of polyuria with a contextualized differential of diabetes uh, insipidus. Um, and at the same time also, it deals with one of the Pacer's favorites, um, i.e. men's syndrome. So the last two slides basically just uh, shows um, the way that I, I, I studied when I came up with my approaches. So the, the first is to just come up with uh, your generic approach, right? So um, primary, secondary, depending on the symptom involved. So this is a very classic uh, headache uh, kind of approach. But also what needs to be paid attention to would be things like red flags. Uh, and subsequently, I also chose to come up with um, dedicated sections that identified uh, what were some of the things that came up commonly in PACER. So venous sinus thrombosis, um, perhaps in the context of some form of uh, hyperviscosity or hypercoagulability state, uh, BIH, GCA, um, pheochromocytoma, things that I may not see so commonly in real life in my day-to-day -day practice, but I know comes up frequently in PACERs. I set these things aside so that I know to um, hunt them down. And I also try to fit them into my approach so I do not... Um, miss things uh, when I try to approach things in a systematic fashion. Um, then I move on to some of the uh, specifics. So let's say this sounds like a thunderclap headache that I think of SAH. I need to remind myself to think laterally for APKD because there are associations with very aneurysms. Um, venous, thrombos uh, venous sinus thrombosis uh, with clotting disorders, um, etc, etc. And then this is sort of like the patterns uh, that I earlier alluded to in terms of approaching uh, headaches. Yeah, so this comes to the end of the presentation. Um, I think the takeaways are really that uh, it's about getting into um, a certain way of thinking, knowing um, how the exam is structured. Um, but I think another caveat is that not always do we get a case that is structured as such. And it's important to um, also prepare yourself for less typical cases, be it the condition, be it that it's a condition that is actually uh, simpler and more common than what we see usually. And sometimes we do get such station fives uh, scenarios. Um, but at the same time also, it is worthwhile reading around what comes out commonly in terms of endocrine and rheumatological disorders. And yeah, this would be an initial primer to get you going. Thank you.